by the grace of Christ. From our reading from the New Testament, let us read from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12 and verse 4. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 4. <clears throat> Luke 12, 4. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But, this, but to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will, be, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded many plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then Whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to a stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grasses, the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows what you need, that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money banks which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no th thief approaches nor moth destroys, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, and you likewise be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the weddings, that when he comes and knocks, 
they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and make them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. To all people Jesus Christ preaches a new doctrine, a, ke him, a heavenly kingdom and life within the will and word of God. To you, my friends, from whom I hide nothing, but whatever my heavenly Father revealed to me, I tell you, do not be afraid of those who have the authority to destroy your body, but after that, they have no authority to do anything more. There will be various events in your life during the time of trouble. There will be threats, but also activities of the enemy. And I tell you, because you are my friends, do not fear them. I will tell you whom you must fear. Do not fear death, in other words, because there is also eternal life. Do not fear the end of this life, for the end of this life is the beginning of the next life. Do not fear, because death will bring you close to the kingdom of heaven within the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> on the contrary, I will tell you whom you must fear here on, in this life, says God, says Jesus Christ. The one who has authority to kill, but later on, after that, he has authority to also judge. He has the authority to save and to make someone perish. The one to whom all judgment was given and all authority in heaven and on earth. Fear him. Not with fear of hell and terror, but with fear of respect and love. And think that two sparrows are completely, their value is completely insignificant. They are sold just for a few pennies. Yet, even one of them, not one of them is forgotten by God. God takes care of that sparrow. Because if God did not take of that sparrow, it won't be able to live. It won't be able to survive, not even for one day. And if this small sparrow that is insignificant survives, how much more then will you and I? My dear brethren, this is a revelation that only God can give us. The sparrow lives its whole life for as long as it is appointed. I don't know, five years, two years, three years, I don't know. But who takes care of this? God does this. And all animals, as many as exist, on the face of the earth, you will see that God takes care of them and they are alive. There is a cycle of life that God takes care of and makes sure. And a, a cycle of health. Who gives wisdom to the birds so that they leave during winter time and they go south? And when it is summer, they come north so they, can be cool, so they can find cooler weather. God does this. All things are in the wisdom of God. If all things truly are preserved, the universe, the stars, the galaxies, the, the natural world, the flora, the fauna. If all these things are preserved through the divine providence of God, how much more then does divine providence take care of you?
no matter who you are. Glory be to God. There is divine providence for all of us. But for God's people, there is God's favor. There is divine favor. And within this divine providence and divine favor, usually man does not participate in this. God makes sure, makes sure of this directly from the throne. How many times has it been that without us realizing God has protected us from death? Or God has healed us? Or God has brought us out of uh, difficult positions and dead ends? He's done it with miracles. <laughs> with activities. How many times has this thing happened? How many times has he not redeemed our soul? And the closer we will get to him, and because he receives us, we will be in safety. For that reason, do not be afraid. But be careful. Do not be afraid, but be careful. Whoever confesses me before men, and does not reproach me, and does not... And, is not ashamed of me, but he glorifies me before men, then I promise up there in heaven to confess him before my Father and his holy angels. But whoever denies me, I will deny him. It is different for you to not be afraid, and it is different to say, be careful. It is different to not be a coward, and it is different to say, keep watch and pray, so that you do not enter into temptation. But pay attention to something more. Whoever says against the Son of Man, speaks up against the Son of Man, God will forgive him. But whoever blasphemes, mocks in his understanding with acknowledgement, consciously, if he makes fun of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as the Pharisee said to Jesus, you cast out demons by Beelzebub. Well, to him, this shall not be forgiven forever. And when you will come into difficulties, he says to his disciples, he's giving these ritual lessons now. He says, do not premeditate, do not plan what you're going to say. I repeat this, my brethren, because it is a snare that we fall into many times. Do not premeditate. Do not plan what you're going to say, what you're going to answer. When for whatever reason they shall bring you in before difficult questions, do not worry. Do not, do not trouble yourself with this. Trust the Word of God. That the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you ought to answer. And even more, the Holy Spirit will answer for you through your mouth. And within all these spiritual lessons that Christ gave, and we have to understand that the natural man does not understand and he cannot understand these things and does not take them into account. He cannot understand these things. He cannot understand what it means, I prophesy by the Holy Spirit. He has never prophesied. God has never spoken to him this way. He cannot understand what it means that he who speaks in unknown tongues edifies himself. He hasn't lived this ever. It can't fit in his mind. He does not believe the word of God. He cannot understand ever what it means the Holy Spirit interprets tongues. He hasn't lived this. And a parenthesis here, I've lived this once. I was in Pyrgos. And a man came in who was a backslider and he gave a, a, a testimony that was astounding and then suddenly we started praying and and then we began to pray and the Holy Spirit began to speak and as I heard the Holy Spirit speak in unknown tongues I heard Greek and the Holy Spirit said do not believe him he's a hypocrite he is lying 
It was an amazing experience, and many more things, he said. And then when we got up, I approached him, and I said, Why do you mock us? And it, he got angry then. My dear brethren, spiritual things are analyzed spiritually. Spiritual things I understood spiritually. Furthermore, there's a nice expression that the Word of God tells us. And I really like it. He who is spiritual can question everything, can understand everything. But he is not understood by anyone. Our Lord spoke things that were marvelous. But across in the multitude there was one people, one man who cared about, cared about his father's wealth. And as he heard the words of Jesus, he had in his mind that his brother was going to wrong him over his father's wealth. My brethren, what are we thinking of right now? This is serious. God is speaking to you. God speaks to us. And we think of natural things and just ordinary things. What shall I say? How will I say it? What will I do now? I must think of something better. It's nothing, brother. Trust the Word of God. Trust God. Seek spiritual things with zeal. Spiritual things, my dear brethren, are not something that you can study. I'll go to theological school. I'll go to a university. I'll go next to a man who is uh, clever. You cannot educate yourself in spiritual things. All these things are revealed by Jesus Christ. Only in your place of prayer with the Word of God will you know what it means that having boldness to enter into the holies through the blood of Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. And this poor man, he was with the rest. He heard the Word of God, but he had in his mind, he had other things in his mind. He had his personal needs, his ambitions. Let us be careful of this, my brethren. Because we do not want to be created in honor. Jesus Christ have added us to his church as being saved, but to be like the beasts that fade, that perish. We want to be like spiritual people that are born again, that are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that are zealous of spiritual matters. Amen? That is what we want to be like. So this poor man uh, expressed his worry. He said, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me, our father's heritage. And what did the Lord answer him? What was the Lord telling him at that moment? Do not premeditate, because the Holy Spirit will teach you what you have to do. Be careful. Confess the name of Jesus so that the Lord may confess you at that hour. Do not worry of those who can kill the body, but worry, but fear him who can kill and who can save. But he answers and says, Lord, tell my, fa my brother to divide our father's uh, wealth with me. That is what we are, we people. There are certain things that say madness. Greek parables that mean madness. The Word of God tells us other things. Jesus Christ tells us other things. And we think of other things. And may God keep us if we think of sin at the same time. And you know what the bad thing is? But it is good. God searches the hearts and kidneys and He knows what we're thinking of very well. He knows our denials. He knows our stance. He knows uh, how we differentiate ourselves or if we agree with the Word of God. He knows everything. But we thank God. The pleasing thing is, the, the bad thing is that He knows everything about us. But the good thing is that He loves us no matter how we are, no matter what we do. Because God is love. 
and he wants to teach us. For that reason, he turns his voice to that man, but to all the rest who did not express their opposition to this, or they did not uh, express their opinion like he did. They did not express the appetite of their heart. And he told them, be careful. No one made me a judge or abatory over you to separate your belongings, to settle your differences. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Life doesn't belong, doesn't depend on his belongings. Life, uh, money and wealth cannot save anyone that we love nor can it save ourselves Christ is the one who receives us and he saves and redeems our soul and he tells them a beautiful parable so they can understand there was a certain rich man who was so rich that that but further than that his uh, his ground yielded plentifully and he had a lot and now the moment came of judgment more correctly, the moment for him to make a decision. Because God judges according to the work of man. He who hears and executes will go to heaven. And he sat down and he thought, and here my dear brothers and sisters, I want to plead with you about something. Let us learn that God wants, but it doesn't want our thoughts so much. More than that, He wants our prayers. Because our thoughts, it's a sure thing that our thoughts have nothing to do with God's thoughts. He doesn't want our will. He wants us to desire His will. But He forgot about God completely. He has a problem before Him. What shall they do with all these goods that God has given him? And he thought of himself only. He only thought of his family. He only thought of his children. And he said, now, I know what I'm going to do now. I will destroy my barns. I will build bigger warehouses. And I will fill them with all these crops that my, that my fields yielded. And he was allowed by God to do this and he finished his barns, he finished his warehouse and that we have achieved something doesn't mean that God wants it. Keep this in mind. God doesn't stop us. And when he was done, then he stood before the mirror, I say this, he said, my soul, now you have many goods laid up for you. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. You will never work in your life again. Take it easy. Now you can do whatever you want. But my dear brethren, we cannot do whatever we want. In the end, man does whatever God wants. Or, God will either work in your life gloriously as you being his child or God will work in your life disgracefully as you being a beast of the of the earth people are like beasts we are like beasts when we leave the presence of God we're a beast we it has nothing different than an animal nothing different at all to an animal how different is a a dog to a woman of the world. How different is a male dog from a young man of the world? They will eat, they will drink, they will do whatever they want. And again in the morning, the same thing. What is the difference of the child of God? He goes to his creator. He prays to him. He reads the word of God. In other words, one word. He is zealous of spiritual matters. This is what differentiates us, my brethren, for the beasts that perish. 
the spiritual things, our spiritual life that we must have. Which is a cooperation of God with man. Man cannot do on his own, but also God cannot do anything on his own. This mystery of the kingdom of heaven, that God unites the heavenly places with the earthly places, and he makes them one. And as it is a mystery and a miracle, when one man comes together with a woman and they become one, so also it is a miracle and a greater mystery when Christ is united with his church and with every one of the believers in the church, and it becomes one. And he comes into earthly vessels, and the, the, ex, ex, the extreme power and glory of God dwells in these vessel, uh, cho- vessels of clay, in the flesh of man. Not in the heart, but in the flesh of man, God dwells. And like the, the neuron system is uh, affected by the brain and I can lift my hands and I can drink water and I can, and I can walk and do everything with the command of my brain, so also the spiritual man with the commands of the brain. But what brain? The body of Christ. Jesus Christ. He can do spiritual things like prophesy and use gifts. There are great spiritual differences that separate the Christian from a beast that perishes to separate man from beasts that perish and the consequences of a natural man that same night God comes and tells him O foolish man this night the beasts the demons demand your soul you did not come to me, so I cannot deliver your soul. I cannot do anything from you, for you. You have lost the game of life. You have lost eternal life. You've lost it. Now, there's only eternal perdition for you. And all the things you have prepared, who will, who will receive these things? Who will take them? No one can take anything with him, my brethren. We do not want to take anything with us. We want Christ to take us with him. Amen. We want Christ to take us with him. We do not want to take anything on our own. We do not have anything. We want to belong to Christ. (laughs) For that reason, he turns to his disciples again. Did you hear these things? Did you see all of this? So now you also take heed Do not worry about what you should eat or what you should drink. Do not worry about how you will live your life, what to eat or what to drink. And do not worry about your body, what you will put on. The nations do this. The Gentiles do this. Do not worry about if you're going to live or not, if you're going to survive or not. You will survive. And your body, God has providence and he will protect your body. How much more then if we know that our life is in the hands of Christ and our body is the temple of God? So don't worry about these things. Not don't work about these, for these things. Be lazy. He's not saying this. But he says do not worry. Do not be anxious. Do not fear. Do not die of fear. Do not have trouble and turmoil. No matter what troubles you, there is a way out of blessing. What is the worst thing that, make, that troubles you? What is this thing? In everything, may your petition be made known to God. Go into your room, shut the door, lock it, turn off the telephone so no one annoys you. Kneel, if you're a woman... Put a, put a covering on, as the Word of God says, and tell your problem to your Heavenly Father. And the way that you would tell your own father, your earthly father, or your best friend, or to the person that you would help, hope for help, go and tell your father, your Heavenly Father, clearly. And I, uh, and I 
encourage you to do this with a loud voice so that the enemy doesn't obstruct your prayer at all. Say, Lord, I have a problem with my child. I have a problem at work. I have a problem in my life. And I'll tell you something else that God told me today. Lord, I have a problem with spiritual things. Please, Lord, increase me in spiritual matters. And you'll see what God will do. Instead of you sitting around and thinking of it, how will it be? How will I do it? How will this happen? One day God told me, with prophecy in the church, this church, climb my holy mountain and there I will reveal mysteries to you. So I went at night at home and I began to think, Lord, how will I climb your mountain? What shall I do? Should I read the Bible? Ah, oh, should I fast? What should I do, Lord? How should I do it? And I was looking for it and I couldn't find anything. And then the inspiration of God arrived. And I knelt down and said, Lord, you told me to climb. I cannot do this on my own. Can you lift me up? It was so easy. And suddenly, my brethren, as if I were in an elevator, but with amazing speed, I was climbing high. And suddenly I found myself on the top of a mountain. It was a rock. And I was amazed. I was alive. I felt it like I was alive. I was looking around. I said, oh, the Lord has brought me up on the mountain. And I rejoiced and I glorified God and then I found myself on my knees again. The next day, all day long, I was thinking, ah, you told me you would reveal mysteries to me and I didn't see anything. You didn't show me anything. It's my fault. What did I do? Next night again, on my knees, I said, Lord, you told me to climb up on the mountain. You'll show me mysteries. Can you lift me up there again because I can't do it again? Whoosh, again, up on the top of the mountain. And this time, instead of looking down, I looked up into the heavens and I saw a sky, my brethren. I've never seen such a sky in my life. There were clouds. There were thunders. There was lightning. There was wind. There was a storm. The clouds were passing one next to the other. There was no specific direction. There was a storm coming that I marveled at. And I was in awe, and I said, the storm of the Lord is coming. The pouring, the rain of the Lord is coming. And then I found myself on my knees again. Next day I went again, Lord, I liked it. Can you bring me up again? Nothing. Since then, this did not happen again. But let us ask from the Lord to show us things. Let us ask for spiritual things. Spiritual life has nothing to do with any other blessed life that you may have here on earth no matter what you do here on earth you will be like you will be like the beasts that perish the differentiation the great difference is that is when Christ takes you and into heaven the apostle Paul says 14 years ago within the body out of the body I do not know how it happened by I was in the but I found myself in the third heavens And there I heard things that is not forgiven to man to express or say. But I was there. Paul's life was completely spiritual. In every difficulty, the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. No one will touch you in Corinth. You will be here because I have a lot of people to save. And And the way that God spoke, that is what happened. In his trip to Rome... 14 days, he became completely desperate. He couldn't see the heavens, he couldn't see the sky, he couldn't see the stars. The ship could not be, uh, was without master in the sea, was completely at hope. No one hoped in anything, of course. Where could they expect for hope? But an angel of the Lord appeared before Paul and said, Paul, don't be afraid. None of these men will die. The ship will be destroyed because you have to go to Rome and confess the name of Jesus Christ there. Paul rejoiced so much, but nothing has changed. What do you mean nothing has changed? The Lord has spoken. He stood up and he said, Men, brothers, do not be afraid. You should have listened to me, but even though you didn't listen to me, God has had compassion on us. And now we're going to reach an island island and if you look at the Mediterranean Sea you will see Malta it's like a small speck and if you look at where Paul started 
with a ship that is uh, uncontrolled and it he arrived to Malta 14 days later you say Christ is alive the king is alive how did the Lord bring the ship this way God does whatever he wants he is the one who created and preserves the universe. He is the one who created and preserves the earth. He is the one who created you and preserves you. And he is the one who regenerated you and is going to give you eternal life. Hallelujah. And now, again, back to spiritual things. Once he told them, do not, be, do not worry about the things that you want for your life. The things that you need. For your life. Do not worry about the things that you need for your body so you can put on and preserve it. You must seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. You must seek spiritual things with zeal. Seek first the heavenly things and the <coughs> and the eternal things that are unshakable. And if you seek spiritual things the kingdom of God, His righteousness, then all the rest shall be added unto you because your heavenly Father knows what things you are in need of. Is God your Father? If you have accepted Jesus Christ, then He is your Father. And if we, being fathers, make sure to have the best for our children, how much more than our heavenly Father? who is good, who is almighty, and he is eternal. My brethren, Jesus Christ said, in my Father's house there are many homes, many mansions, but they are empty. They are empty. They are without dwellers. And all the heavens are waiting. As we men are waiting for Jesus Christ to come, so also the heavens, the angels, the archangels, the cherubims, the seraphims are waiting for the church to go up there. There is a desire. Both ways. We say, Lord, come and receive us. And in heavens, there is another desire. Lord, bring up your children so that we may do, they may dwell into eternal life. Hallelujah. It is not good for man to be alone, God said. And it is not good for God to be alone. Let us make man according to our image and likeness. Be mindful of the things above and not the things on the earth. Seek the things above and not the things on the earth. Because a spiritual earthquake will occur in your life and in your family at an appointed time in the church, in the whole world, in our country. So that God, Christ, may destroy the shakable things and the unshakable things to remain. But this earthquake may happen by your initiative or when God wants it, because God wants it always. My time has not come yet, but your time is always. So today, let us ask for God to declare and to do new things in our life. Let us come out of that which the Word of God says, man who is in honor and does not understand is like the beast that perish. We do not want to be like the men of this world who are like the beast that perish. We want to be like our Heavenly Father. <coughs> we want to be like the first apostolic church. We want to be like the saints of God. And we want to walk in God's righteousness and peace and joy within the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom of God on earth. And for that reason, do not be afraid, small flock, little flock. You're a little flock with small strength. You're an insignificant person. You're small, you're wretched and vile, you know it. God has chosen the babes of this world. Why? So he can put to shame those who are wise. He has chosen the weak to disgrace the mighty. Do not be afraid, little flock. For God has the good pleasure to give you the kingdom. For that reason, do not be afraid. 
Jesus Christ said, Whoever wants to come after me must deny himself. Do not be afraid in denying yourself. When the rich young man went to Christ, he said, What should I do so I can inherit eternal life? And he told him something that is very difficult. He told him, Sell everything, give it to the poor and follow me, and you will have a treasure in heaven. But what is he saying to this man? Is he sending him away? No. He's telling him this so he can remain. He reveals his weakness to him. You are a man that is like the beast that perish. Why? You hope in your goods and you boast in the abundance of your wealth even though you know that wealth and goods do not save nor the one that you love, nor do they save yourself. Christ saves. <coughs> and the young rich fellow did what? He heard this, he was saddened, and he leave, left. He was offended by the word of God. And many times the word of God is harsh. And that's why Peter said, Lord, your word is hard. And the Pharisees have left. And the Lord turned and said to him, Do you want to go also? If the word of God sounds difficult to you, don't think of leaving. Make the decision to stay. Why? Because what is impossible with men is possible with God. God is not telling you to do things. God is telling you to go to him so he can do things. This is what the gospel of Christ is. Not by might nor by strength, only by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What was the mistake of the rich man? That he was afraid and he left. What was the right thing that Peter did? He was, he was saddened, he was grieved, but he remained. He said, Who to whom shall I go, Lord? You have words of eternal life. I do not understand a lot of things. I cannot handle a lot of things that you're telling me. But God says, I do not want you to handle nor understand the things that I'm telling you. If you want this, I will explain it to you and I will help you do it. What I want... What God wants is our heart, my brethren. He wants us to love Him. Amen. So today let us love Christ. My son, give me your heart. For out of it spring forth all the issues of your life. Don't say, I can't, I don't know what to do, how to do it. Forget about it. God will do this. You just say, I love you and I will follow you always. Today, my brethren, let us leave with a decision in our heart. A serious decision, an immovable decision. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. I believe you. Help me in my unbelief. Help me in my weakness. Lord, my God, lift me up into your holy mountain. Teach me the spiritual things that only you can do and know. Lord, give me eternal life. Amen.